Welcome back to another episode of the Miami Heat Roundtable. My name is Amir, joined today by Martel. You can find Martel on the Miami Heat Zone podcast. And I'm joined by Ernest. You can find him on Miami Heat Talk. Before we get into the video, I just want to thank everybody for subscribing to our channels and following us. But for those folks that are not subscribed to our channels, subscribe to our channels. We're getting some good feedback that you guys enjoy these roundtable episodes. We really enjoy connecting and networking and getting together. So if you can subscribe to all our channels, Trent's not available today. So don't forget about Trent. We'll link his channel in the description as well. So that's Miami Heat Network. But anyway, so we wanted to hop on real quick and it's all-star break. So the Miami Heat don't play for another week. We have some guys that are going to be participating in the all-star weekend, which is good. We got Jaime Jaquez in the Rising Stars game and the dunk contest. And then we have Bam in the all-star game on Sunday. So we want to talk about just the current status of the Miami Heat. So two big wins back to back on the road to um, finish before the break, which is huge. They're 30 and 25 now, seventh seed, half a game behind the Pacers. And luckily, the Sixers and the Knicks are kind of free falling. They're dealing with some injuries, too, right now. So we might be able to catch up to those teams as well, which is huge. So let's start off with you, Martel. What are your thoughts just so far? It's not the midway. They used to do this at All-Star break. It used to be at the 42 mark, but now we're at 55 games. We have 27 left. But how do you grade this Miami Heat team so far and how they've performed so far this year? Well, it's really hard to grade the team only because, you know, we're always injured. And as soon as we get back healthy, we're probably healthy for like a few games. And then, boom, you know, back to more injuries. My biggest thing about this Miami Heat team, and this playoffs is really going to tell that, is can Jimmy, Bam, and Tyler play together? Can they all function with each other in the playoffs? And especially Tyler here, like I really want to see how he looks, you know, after All-Star break. Now, the other big question is also, too, is that when everybody gets back, what are some of the starting lineups going to look like? I know that Jovic, he's been playing phenomenal. Well, not phenomenal, but he has that potential to at least help Bam out of with that four position. And same thing with Duncan Robinson. He's been playing great. And, you know, for him to go back to the bench, I think that's a hard pill for him to swallow. So we're going to have to see when Terry and everybody comes back, and especially with, you know, DeLon Wright coming now. You know, how do we really put all these guys right on the court together, and what are the lineups going to look like? Yeah, Ernest, what do you think about the team so far, how they've done? I mean – if you if you want to give it a grade, you know, I mean, I agree with Martel. Injuries really have held us back, but I would give us a solid B. You know, I know we had that se- like it, the the seven game loss stretch that really hampered us. You know, I, I I thought before that the Heat were having a great season. You know, you had breakouts from Duncan Robinson, Jaime Jaquez Jr., Josh Richardson was looking nice, Kevin Love was looking good. Uh, I think this team currently constructed is fine. I think in the playoffs, we can definitely make some noise. I agree with Martel. We need to figure this lineup out. It's not really just the lineup. It's figuring out who's your best nine. Spo likes to go with a nine-man rotation during the season, but in the playoffs, it's usually seven to eight. So who are going to be those guys moving forward? Now, I heard a rumor, or not a rumor, I actually read an article yesterday that an NBA executive thinks that Nikola Jovic is actually, is actually going to be a secret weapon weapon for the Miami Heat come playoff time. So that's something to look into. I think the Heat need to go with him simply because of the fact of what he does when he's out there with Bam. I can't think of another NBA team that your two big guys, your center and your power forward, can lead a fast break and be ball-dominant players with the ball in their hand. I can't really think of a lot of teams that have that with their center and power forward. You know, I like Caleb Martin. I like Haywood Highsmith. but the last thing we need is a six foot three power forward. Jovic gives us everything we need offensively, size presence. It's just his defense. So we need to get this figured out. We got the best coach in the NBA. That's what the season's for. I really believe come playoff time, the Heat are going to push it just like we've seen them last year. It's Groundhog's Day, bro. We're at the same situation we're at last year, but I think we can get out of the play in. I think we can. Yeah, definitely. It's funny. We have the same exact record, but it's still. Like a different season. Last season, we lost to more of those crappy teams. I know we have some, we've had some bad losses, losing to like the Toronto Raptors and and a few other teams that are subpar. But at least we're not having like all those clutch games. Like last year, it was like every single game was a clutch game. At least this year, at least most recently, 
we've had some kind of blowout games and some games that like weren't down to the wire that were super torturous. So that's that's a good sign too. And I think that's because our defense has been picking up. And to your guys' point, beginning of the season, we were playing really well. We were eight games above 500 at that point. We were ahead of the Knicks and um, who else was it? The Magic and the Pacers and all those teams. We were we were the third seed. I mean, it was really early on, but like we thought we were like in that tier with the Sixers, the Bucks, and the Celtics. And then we had a ton of injuries that, again, Tyler Hero missed 18 games and Bam missed double digits. And then Jimmy, of course, has missed double digits now. And we've been able to hang on, which is which is surprising. You know, we, we've been up and down and that's that's Miami Heat basketball since this Jimmy Air, like just Jimmy Butler build. Like it's just dealing with injuries for the most part, but we don't use that as an excuse. So team's getting better defensively, which is great. I remember talking to you guys a month ago and the Heat's defensive rating was like 14 or so. And I was like, in order for this team to succeed, we need to be a top 10 defense again. And right now our defensive rating is eight. So we're eighth right now, which is a good sign. And Bam is playing better, obviously, defensively, Caleb Martin. And then, of course, the guys that usually get hunted, like a Jovic, who's been playing lately, and Duncan and Tyler have been playing better, too. So the big issue, though, is always the the offense. Offensive rating is 22. So we need to figure stuff out. Terry Rozier's hurt. He's out. Hasn't looked good with Tyler Hero and just has been shooting poorly. So I think moving forward, we are going to be a threat. And... I think the only team we're all probably worried about realistically in the East is the Boston Celtics, right? And we had a great game against them um, a week ago or so, even though we lost by four points, but we were shorthanded. So do you guys feel like the Bucks, Sixers, and Knicks are not threats at all? And then this is kind of lining up to your point, Ernest, how every season comes. Like people forget about us. They don't talk about us. They don't report us. And then when it comes to playoff time, no one wants to play us. This happens every year. It happens every year. And I'm not shocked. I'm not surprised. I'm not phased by it. The great thing about this team is that a seeding doesn't matter. And I remember the beginning of this year uh, when the Heat were fourth, I'm thinking, all right, get this. Get top four. Show your presence of the season. It doesn't matter. When it comes playoff times, it's just like you said. Ain't no team want to see this smoke for seven games. We're the hardest team in the East to beat. Boston is right there with us. When they got that unicorn, At first, when they made the trade for Marcus Smart, I'm thinking, terrible trade. Then they got Drew Holiday, and then you see Porzingis out there with them. They're a real threat. That size issue is a real big deal. But I'm fully confident in this roster in a seven-game series. Now, two things, which is very important. One, health. We know this. It's our issue every single year. I've called this the LeBron curse on my channel since 2014 since lebron has left miami every year we are knocked with this injury bud call it bad luck call it call it a curse call it just in our heads but it's the truth so the heat needs to be healthy but secondly man you got to get an optimal lineup out there now i know you mentioned with terry rozier hasn't been playing that great with hero that wasn't really the case the last three games before he got injured They were actually getting better acclimated. Terry Rozier was actually finding his place in the office. That's why this injury sucked, man, because he was really getting acclimated. What I feel, what should happen when Rozier comes back? We've all said this, but I think the optimal lineup is to continue to have Duncan Robinson out there. When Duncan comes off the bench, he's not playing with Jimmy and Bam. Duncan gets his optimal usage when he's out there with Jimmy and Bam because he doesn't need to play with the ball in his hand. He spaces the floor. He allows Jimmy and Bam to create out on their own. He doesn't allow the double team to come. When he's out out there, either if it's with Rozier or, or Tyler, it's a different offense. But when you have Tyler Hero and Rozier out there, it's two Tylers basically. And like, and that Tyler's even mentioned he's wanted, he's become more of a shooter in his game to help the offense. I've noticed that I've given Tyler credit, but Duncan is the more optimal player to have out there. Either Duncan, Jaime, or Caleb Martin starting at that shooting guard position because that gives us a different offense and it gives us some better defensive presence. Not with Robinson, obviously, but I think the offense flows better. I don't know what Martel thinks. Yeah, Martel, who do you think, who do you think, if Duncan is going to come in that starting lineup, who do we put to the bench? Because I know you want that. We talked about this in the last episode, you and I, so. Man, it's kind of hard, bro. Like, whatever makes this team win games, you know what I mean? Like, I know that first we have to be healthy to see who, you know, who can really play well together. Like, I know that Tyler and 
Um, you know, Duncan have played well of late together. And surprisingly, like, especially on the defensive end. So we're just really going to have to see once Terry comes back, when Josh Richardson comes back, and especially when Jimmy Butler comes back, you know, how are the lineups going to work? Because, yes, you know, defense is great, but this team struggles on the offensive end, and especially with the offense, with the Bucks game and the 76ers game with Tyler and Duncan, it's looked great with them. The ball movement is fantastic. So we're going to have to really, you know, just tinker with that lineup to see one through five, who's going to play together. And especially with Jovic, or is Highsmith going to play the four? So Spoh's really going to have to make some big decisions going forward. I mean, I'll be honest with you guys. I, I think I said this a few roundtables ago, uh, but I'll be 100% real. I really believe that the playoffs, second half of the season, we're going to have to windle this roster down into like our top seven, eight guys. If Jovic doesn't work out as a starting power forward moving forward, going into playoffs, I really think Spoh should consider starting Jaime Akas at the four. Like, I really, like, instead of Caleb Martin, Jaime Hawkins is bigger in size. He's stronger. Um, and I think a front court with Bam Adebayo, Jimmy Butler, and Jaime Hawkins Jr. can work better. And that way, this allows Caleb Martin to be the main wing player coming off the bench with Duncan Robinson and Kevin Love. So, because you guys know, Spo doesn't really go nine man. I don't think Josh Richard. I think Josh Richardson's going to be the odd guy out <laughs> moving forward especially in the playoffs like you may see him play some games you may not see him play some games so i'm interested what you guys think like if Jovic doesn't work out would you guys prefer haywood highsmith caleb martin or jaime Hawkes jr as the starting four this is if Jovic doesn't work out yeah i mean it's funny you mentioned Jovic because he either starts or doesn't play basketball like he had he's played 22 games of the of the 55 so far 22 of the 55 right and mm -hmm. he started 10 like a month ago right so he had like that one um span where he got to play a lot and then because of injuries when we're shorthanded that's when he comes in so i i, I saw that report too about Jovic being a secret weapon the only way he's a secret weapon is if he cracks the rotation for the remainder of the season he needs even if he's not our starting four because again i think i'd rather have duncan inserted into that starting lineup somehow um and keeping Caleb Martin I guess on there or whoever it may be um but he needs to play in order to be a secret weapon so he needs the confidence and the minutes and so that's one factor the other factor of that is just who's playing the best and who's healthy because do you remember when we were playing against I think it was against Boston Caleb Martin wasn't starting. He was coming off the bench. And then finally, when we're in the playoffs, you got to play your top five. He was one of our top five. Then we finally inserted him in there and we saw what happened. So I think timing matters because we're so deep and we have so many similar wing type players. It just depends on who's playing better. Because right now, Hawk has, I would say no, based on just the way he's been playing after the injury. He's starting to play a little bit better. So I would say maybe no to him. Maybe no to Caleb because he's been inconsistent. And I would try to insert a Jovic or Duncan right now because they're both playing well. So I think it just all depends on who's playing well and who's healthy at the time. Kind of a cop-out answer, but I don't know. Martel, what do you think about like optimal starting lineup in the playoffs? Well, it comes down to matchup, but I think that Jovic should definitely get some run because think about it. Why do we have him on the roster? And why do we continue to quote-unquote build him up? He's going to need these game-time reps. He's going to yep. need – you know, these playoff reps, especially too. So I think honestly, between, you know, Highsmith or Jovic, I think that they should, you know, maybe battle it out like within the two, like when it comes to the four position, uh, you know, and then like with Tyler Hero, like I said, hopefully Tyler Hero can continue to play more off ball so that, you know, he doesn't really have the ball in his hands. This Miami Heat team, we have so many weapons. There's no reason for him to try to chuck up 20 shots. You know what I mean? I don't think he has to do that. All we need for him to do is just to be, a good playmaker, hit those three-point shots, spread the floor a little bit, and let Jimmy and Bam work because we all know that when it comes to the playoffs, that's where our depth comes in. That's where we'll be able to beat other teams by, you know, just showing showing each other love on the court by spreading the ball around and just playing as a team because we don't necessarily have the superstar talent all the time, but we can beat other teams by playing as a team, if you see what I'm saying. Yep. Ernest, I hear you. I mean, what I was trying to say with Highsmith, Martin, and uh, Hawkes, because I know that's where we're going to go. I don't think Jovic is going to play in the playoffs. I really don't think so. And Spo likes to go seven-man, eight-man. I think 
if you're dwindling down players between the three, Hawkes might be the best option. And by the playoffs, I think he's going to be fresh. But I get what you guys are saying. I hope Jovic gets the opportunity. He's got the size. He's got the skill. Yeah. Let me ask you guys this real quick, Ernest. So we talked about Duncan a little bit going into the starting lineup. It seems unlikely, but he's playing really well next to Tyler. And Tyler and Duncan are both really good pick and roll players with Bam out of bio. So if you if it was was the Sixers game in the first two minutes of the game, Duncan had two alley oops off pick and roll to Bam, like which is huge. Getting Bam easy baskets. He's been taking that mid range all day and has been inconsistent, right? So we need to get Bam some easy opportunities and Duncan provides that. And we saw that Duncan and Tyler were like setting each other up as well, playing well off each other. The issue is hunting and defense, all that stuff, but who gives a shit at this point? Like we need to score more. That's the biggest issue. Like, so I don't know if it's plausible that he's going to play. Cause I don't see, we obviously know Tyler's not going to go on the bench. It doesn't seem like Terry would be the odd man out in theory that spoke could ask, would you come off the bench? Be our sixth man. That seems unlikely too. So in theory, could you imagine or see a lineup of Terry, Tyler, Duncan, and then Jimmy has to move to the four and then bam? What are your thoughts on that lineup? Because we're going back to the Duncan piece. You saw his stats. We're we're 15 and five with him starting. We're we're 14 and one if he scores 20 plus points. Like the numbers aren't lying right now. So just what are your thoughts on that lineup? Would that make sense? Or do you think defensively would be limited? I mean, yeah, it would limit us defensively. That would be one hamper, you know. And secondly, I don't think you know, Jimmy said it before. He's not a four. Jimmy likes playing the three. Jimmy likes having another wing with him so they can switch off. I don't think that. I honestly don't think it'll work. I mean, that's awesome for two K. That's an awesome lineup for two K. But <laughs> I don't think it'll work NBA wise simply because of the defensive liability. I think the optimal lineup, if you ask me, for the playoffs: Bam, Hawkes, Jimmy. Duncan and Tyler just to have size. So all of your five players starting are six, five and taller. You have Terry Rozier as the six man with Caleb Martin and Kevin Love. That's your eight man rotation. You can sprinkle some jo uh, Jovic and Josh Richardson when you need them. They can give you nice little spurts, five to eight minutes when you need them, especially Josh for his defense. But that's where I feel Spo's going to go. I really believe that Hawkes may get the nod for the starting power forward if he continues to get better the second half of the year. Yep. I don't think Spo is going to change the rotation when everybody's healthy. I think it's going to be Terry, Tyler, insert a Caleb or Hawkes or, ha or Haywood, one of those three, right, that you mentioned, regular season. Yeah. And then we're going to have Jim and Jimmy and Bam. So uh, he's got a tinker. He has a lot of toys he can play with, which is good. So that's a good thing. We'll be healthy hopefully after. He got a new time. toy. Is a new toy. Perfect segue. Thank you. So Miami Heat buyout market. It seemed like we weren't going to sign anybody. Like everybody that was associated to the Miami or linked to the Heat signed with other players. Thad Young, Suns, Gallinari, Bucks. But we finally got some breaking news today, which I didn't expect during All-Star Weekend. So the Miami Heat did or is going to sign Daylon Wright from the Washington Wizards when he clears waivers. So Martell. What are your thoughts on him? He's not a point guard. Truly, he's more of a combo guard, but he's a 6'5 point guard, shooting guard. Just what are your thoughts on him and his impact in cracking our rotation? Yeah, so it's like what you said. He's a 6'5 guard, like which is good. You know, like especially like with Terry and Josh out, we're definitely going to need a good defender that's going to be next to Tyler Hero. So that will help take some of the pressure off of, you know, you know Tyler Hero defensively. So I'm hoping that, you know, he can come in and make a very good impact. He's the type of guard that Spo does like to play, you know, uh, his brother used to play for the Miami Heat, so they do have that Miami Heat connection. He is also a fan of, of D. Wade, which, you know, pretty much all the people that we get, they all love D. Wade. So, you know, like I'm hoping that once everybody gets back, he can also still have a spot within the rotation. But I think he should be good, you know, a decent three-point shooter. He's quick. He's athletic. That's the type of stuff that the Miami Heat need on their roster. Um, to add to that, I will say this, when I saw that signing, I mean, it was cool. You know, I, I did a little short about it. Um, but then I saw that signing and I'm like, okay, you filled your last roster spot. I know we can cut Orlando Robinson or Drew Smith to pick up another buyout if we wanted to. But when I saw that signing, I'm like, is Josh Richardson and Terry Rozier's injury worse 
than what we think because we don't i mean he's he's fine you know what what he brings is definitely someone you can use you know you know the miami heat how much we love wing defenders uh i know he's a combo guard we don't have a backup point guard so this was something that he fans have been clamming for size or a backup point guard that can shoot threes and can defend we got that so i think that's cool um i i think it'll help out in case josh or terry get injured again you know but it, it doesn't address the problem we have but there's nobody available to fix that problem like who are you gonna pick up robin lopez no <laughs> for what to sit in the end of the bench and do nothing nah Daylon Wright, he can play, you know, and then this gives an opportunity that if Jimmy wants to take a few more games off down the stretch to, you know, get ready for the playoffs, I don't even though I don't condone that, but it gives us another wing player to play out there. But Jesus Christ, you know, Eric Spolstra probably fucking put the Daylon Wright in the starting power for it or some shit like that. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a need that was addressed. It wasn't the ultimate need that us Heat fans have been complaining about because Thomas Bryant is unplayable and it's just defense. Like he's, he's shown like spurts, like in his career with the wizards and Lakers that like he can score, but he's just like pretty one dimensional. It doesn't have the best hands. And then just defensively he's, he, he gets benched on every team that he's been on for a reason. So people in the comments just complain, why is Thomas Bryant not playing? Why is not, why is Orlando not playing? I went to Fresno state. I, I rep Orlando. Right. But like he's young and raw still, and he was undrafted and like he's clumsy to a certain degree. Like he's inconsistent because he's nervous. He doesn't like the psychology of it too, is a part of it that he's not getting playing time. And you could see when he's playing in garbage time against the bucks, like that was horrible when he came in and Alondis came in and Swider came in like, and then the bucks put in fantasis, which is like the best fucking white flag you could see like game over fantasis is in a game. It's like the best thing you could see as a heat fan. <laughs> that was like garbage basketball for seven minutes, right? Like both teams couldn't score shit. So like there's a reason why they're not playing. So we were upset that we do need a backup sort of center because Orlando and Thomas Bryant aren't cutting it. And we got Dale on right, but guess what he is? He's one of Ernest's like favorite terms that he likes to use for the Miami Heat wing players. He's a Swiss army knife. Like he could play kind of point guard. He could play kind of shooting guard. If not, he could play small forward for us. He's six, five athletic, long, good point of attack defender. He's taking Josh Richardson's spot right now. That's like if he's going to get minutes, because I believe he's going to play over Jovic. Like Jovic is probably not going to get the minutes realistically. We know Duncan realistically is not going to start because Spo is stubborn, right? As much as we want it, I don't think Duncan's going to start. I don't think Jovic is going to start or be in the rotation. But he's taking, I think, Jay Rich's minutes. We'll see what happens when they come back. To your point, Ernest, Jay Rich might be out longer. Who knows? It might not be two weeks. It might be four to five weeks. And that's like 15 10, 15 games, and we only have 27 left. So, yeah. I mean, he dislocated his shoulder, right? That's what they came up with. Yeah, Julius Randle, you know, like when all said and done, he's going to be out for at least a minimum of four weeks, and he had the same injury as Julius Randle. So yeah. he's going to be out for two weeks. Um, it's nice that at least one of the weeks is during all-star break, so, like, he's not going to be missing games, but he'll get reevaluated. So who knows? Maybe Yeah. Knows? Yeah, I mean, what was it is – I forgot. Was it his shooting arm? I think I it was his right shoulder. Yeah, I think it was his right shoulder. If I if I'm trying to like mem like vividly try to remember, months. If it was his non-shooting arm, then I'd say two weeks. But if it was a shooting arm, I'd say probably a four weeks. Most yeah, likely. But even if, even even if it's your non-shooting arm and he's right-handed, if it's the off arm, like you usually drive to your right. If you're ball dominant on the right, you drive yeah. and then you 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 show. I mean, NBA soft these days. They don't. There's not much contact, but you know what I mean. You you get that body with your left shoulder so mm -hmm. anyway good uh, signing before we end the the episode just want to talk about the outlook of the miami heat after all-star break so again 27 games left half a game from the pacers knicks sixers free falling knicks will i think knicks will pick up because they're gonna get um og back and then uh randall back so two big players missing but what are your predictions for the rest of the season, guys? So we're trying to avoid the play in like the plague. Like we just we don't need extra mileage on Jimmy Butler, right? We need him to be healthy and rested. So we and we don't want the eighth seed. That would be so detrimental if we somehow lose the play in like we did last year as a seventh seed and had to become the eighth seed and play the Celtics the first round. That that's we need to avoid that by all costs. So how do the Heat avoid that moving forward? And how what's your prediction on where we're going to finish at the end of the season? What seed do you think we'll be? 
You want to hop in all, yourself? Bro, this all starts with Jimmy, Bam, and Tyler. Now, especially Jimmy, because think about it. He's going to probably have, well, maybe almost a month off of basketball. So once he returns, it's go time. Because think about it. He's not going to play maybe the last three games. So he's so then that means he's going to get even more rest closer to the end of the season. It's time for Jimmy Butler to lead this team. This team, you know, Tyler and Bam are great, but they cannot carry night in and night out versus these other, you know, good teams in the NBA. All these teams across the NBA right now, they're going to try to finish strong to make sure that they're in the right seating. I'm hoping that the Miami Heat can at least get, what, the fifth spot or the sixth spot? Because the uh, sixth spot, that's out of the plan, right? Yep, seven and eight through plan. So at least, bro, at least the sixth or the fifth, you know, like I said, it's time for Jimmy Butler to start hooping. It's time for him to lead this team. They feed off of all of his energy, and we go as far as Jimmy Butler takes us. Now, of course, you know, Tyler and Bam are going to have to do their thing, which they have been like the past two games. But especially when everybody gets healthy, everything starts and ends with Jimmy Butler. What's your prediction? Where do you think they'll end up in the season? Probably six or the fifth. Probably Ernest? six or the fifth. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm looking at their schedule. Uh, their next 10 games, they have five really tough matchups, but then five very winnable games. The tough matchups are the Pelicans, the Kings, the Nuggets, the Thunder, uh, and the Mavericks. So you got some. Oh, you got the th- uh, yeah, you got the Nuggets again too. So you got some very tough matchups. I think to Martel's point, with with this All Star break and with Jimmy Butler taking time off, I think when he comes back, it's going to be go time. Uh, Terry Rozier is going to come back. March is always Miami Heat's best month. We always turn it on. This happened last year, uh, but you know we did get a little held back with injury as well. But this year, if we stay if we stay healthy, I think the Heat will make a run. I think they will get out of the uh, the the play in situation. I don't think you want to go through that again. Even though if we do go through that, I'm still confident. Uh, but I think I agree with Martel. I think um, six or fifth. I would love the six seed because I've been saying this all year long. Give me Boston again in the conference finals. And how do you get Boston? You need to play either seed two or seed three. So I want six. So that way we don't have to play in the play in. And then we'll take on Milwaukee or one of these teams in the first round. I know that he can beat any of these teams. Give me Boston round three Eastern Conference finals, three years straight. That's what I want. I like that too. I think sixth, I'm going to predict we're going to be sixth. Um, and I'm hoping we play the Knicks over. I hope the Bucks don't fall to three. I mean, that's still a pretty tough out. I think we could beat the Bucks, but I mean, Giannis is still a top three, four NBA player. So that's that's tough. Um, you don't think so? You don't think Giannis he's top four? Oh no, he is. Oh, but he, 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 here's no. But here's the problem with Giannis. Whenever he sees a Miami Heat jersey, he, the bitch comes out of him. So yeah, I, I'll also take Milwaukee on round one. I don't care. I'll take any of them. Milwaukee, New York, Cleveland. I don't care. I want all the smoke. Just yeah. save Boston for the conference finals. That's Agreed. what I want. Agree. But I would still prefer the Bucks be second and we could play either the Knicks or the Sixers as the third seed. I, I mean, assuming the Sixers can sustain not having Joel Embiid, which I don't think they can necessarily. But mm-hmm. to your point, I agree. Six seed sounds good. And even if we do play the Bucks, if they fall to the third seed, I want all that smoke. The only time they swept us was when – they they were they went four and zero against us in twenty twenty one shortest off season, um, in NBA history for a team right because of the, the bubble, and the Bucks had a long off season. Yes, and also <laughs> and also Bryn Forbes got arrested if you saw on Twitter. So there's no more Bryn Forbes who was the Miami Heat killer, right? Bryn Forbes <laughs> told us in that theory. So I'll take on I'll take on the Bucks, but yeah, I think six seed is what I predict as well. Um, excited, we need playoff Jimmy during the regular season now no more load managing in games no more load managing in general right now obviously he has a a very valid and good excuse for why he's missing some games but if we can hold off while he's been out that's good because he's getting some rest which is a good thing right like arrested jimmy butler who has more to lift in his legs and his jump shot like is a good thing so yeah we need him to step and, up. The big three need to step up. Yeah. And the fact that the Heat won those last two games against the Bucks and the Sixers, I don't think people understand how great that was because confidence. Your confidence got shot up. You won those games without Jimmy, Rozier, and Richardson. So now, now you're going to come with the second half of the year with these guys. I think my, we're going to see – a. Uh, I predict the Heat are going to have the best record in March. I'm predicting that right now. 
I think the Heat will have the best record in March. I may be wrong. Good Lord. But I have a strong feeling about Miami in March. I really do. And I'm liking the matchup. I'm liking the matchups that we have later on in the season in March and going into April. I think the Heat are going to do some damage March, March and April. Yep, March. We have some good, easy games against the Pistons and, and the Wizards and teams like that, so we, we better dominate. So we'll see if we got to think of a nickname for Nostradamus over here because Ernest – Ernest to Dramas doesn't really flow well, so we got to figure out. We got to figure out if Ernest is correct or not. We'll see what after March. Anyway, I hope so, man. Yeah, trying to be confident. Hey, it's it looked bleak for a little bit, but this is what Miami does to you, baby. They're they're up and down. They're torturous, right? One of the most torturous teams to follow, man. Just stressful. Bro. There's no there's no sweet without the sour, right? So that's <laughs> what we love about the Miami Heat. But anyway, thank you so much, guys. Um, Hope you guys enjoy All-Star break. Hopefully our boy Jaime wins the dunk contest because I'm more excited about the dunk contest and skills challenge and three-point crap versus the game. The game has always been pretty boring. I mean, I'm not a kid anymore. When I was, like, in high school and younger, like, you know, All-Star weekend was, like, the shit. You know, I still enjoy it, but I enjoy the, the challenges more. So hopefully our boy Jaime can come up with a victory today, actually, as well. He's playing in a game as well. So Just don't get hurt. That's all I care. Just don't, just don't get hurt. That's all I care about. I don't care. I don't care if he wins. I don't care if he loses. I don't care. Just don't get hurt. That's it. Bam, Jaime. Just don't get hurt, please. Well, the good thing about the good thing about Bam is that he's not like an All Star type of guy. You know what I mean? Like whenever he's been an All Star, like he doesn't get that many minutes because he's not like a Devin Booker, or KD, Steph, and all those guys who try to show out and do all that type of stuff. So yeah, knock on wood. I mean, at least we. We could be cursed with Miami Heat injuries, but luckily we haven't had injuries in the, the All Star game, right? That's, True that. That's just true problem. that. True that. Well, people, look, don't forget, like, subscribe, Team to Be Miami Heat, Miami Heat Talk, Miami Heat Zone Podcast. Even though we dropped out, hope Martel's okay. Uh, and don't forget, we also have Miami Heat Network with Trent. Guys, appreciate your love and support. Until next time, that's enough said. <laughs>